All right, hi guys, welcome back. It's not exactly a part two, but I suppose it is. I was just done the topiary. I'm doing this straight after. Right, I'm gonna now, I'm gonna just turn a little pot, one of these, okay? Just a just tiny little pot. Now these are brilliant. I get the, these came from, say, uh, Snayton. They do these, all these various types of wood. Um, these ones, little, little blocks here like this. They do them pound each, or you get 10 for £7.50. Okay, little blocks like this. They're all waxed on the ends, and they're, they're, they're fantastic. Go on their site. You can buy them on their site on, online as well if you, if you can't get up there. Um, I just went up there and sorted out what ones I want, so brilliant. Um, right, I'm just going to turn a little pot ugh, like this so I can show you a few different tools, the way I use the tools. Um, a lot of, as I say, I'll get lots of questions from people with all, all because I've done a few bits with the traditional tools, so now people are asking me about the traditional tools as well. What people would call traditional, I don't call them traditional, they're just tools spindle gouge, bowl gouge, roughing gouge. People that say, Oh, yeah, I'm all traditional, and then they get their power drill out and start sanding. And I think that's very traditional. Yes, they did have them <laughs> power drills 40, 50 years ago, didn't they? <laughs> right, um, I'm waffling, aren't I? I think, actually, I must say that I think the fan, most, the best invention ever, the cordless drill. My God, did that save on blisters from putting screws and fit cordless <laughs> tools. Has that helped the workman for today, eh? Cordless tools. No generators, go anywhere. Just take your cordless. And batteries are fantastic now. So anyway, that's enough of that. Right, a little pot like that. Now, this was actually done from side grain. So this is bowl, a bowl, actually, bowl orientation it's not end grain turning so you've got the two types for any of you that are interested let's say you experienced ones it's not for you this is for new turners um right this way the grain running that way that'd be classed as spindle turning and you'll be end grain hollowing one what a lot of people say is the hardest of hollowing it is in a way because you, you don't really push cut on end grain because all the fibres are coming this way and you pull them out and you'll get fluff. So you normally hollow on a pull cut or your back hollow. You do back hollowing. Back hollowing, I don't like it. A very, very aggressive um, cutting. I'll show a little bit of it. It's not one I use. It, it's more if you're into production, really, and you just want to really hog wood out and get it done quick. I'm never in that sort of hurry. Not Well, not now that I don't hurry like that. So, right, what I'm going to do with this, first off, stop talking. Right, I use my, uh, you know, no, I use these for my, uh, my centre. I use, have these on, and they take all these, all these centres. I don't lose, use uh, drive centres. They take all these heads, and they screw in. But the beauty of them, with their little lip on them, is if you get the right chuck key for your chuck, <laughs> they actually all, you don't damage the threads, push it right in. And lock and that perfect lines are perfect and everything i'm going to use a step center this side because i'm not going to hollow it end grain i'm going to go side grain so i'm just using this square piece of wood like this this is of course anyone that might be interested this piece of wood is 100 mil so sh shade an eighth under four inches and it's 75 mil, so an eighth under three inches. Right, there you go. So I'm just gonna, I've marked the centers already on this. Right, so I'm just popping that between centers. Okay, there we go. I've got a big step center on this side, step center that side, it ain't going nowhere, okay? <laughs> Safety is the main thing, make sure that, that it's, it's safe, okay? Right, now, this is bowl orientation, so you do not want to use a spindle roughing gouge on this. Do not use this tool on here. The reason being, it will dig in, it will grab that, and it will try and peel this whole side off in one go. You'll get a hell of a catch, and it'll be very nasty. Don't use that for this. Okay, but we can use a bowl gouge, which we'll do a little bit of a bowl gouge. So we can use our bowl gouge like this, which has your deeper flute. Okay, that's the bowl gouge. But we can also use our, where are we? Spindle gouge. So we've got spindle gouge. So I'm gonna start off with the spindle gouge. Okay. Right, 
and we'll use a, a little bit of a variety. We're going to be using carbide as well when we come down to doing a bit of hollowing. Right, I'm going to, Lisa's going to just step to the side while I start this up. No, you can leave the camera there. Just you step to the side. It's you, I don't want to get hurt. Right, so I'm just going to start that up, make sure it all stays in place. Yep, nice and fast, all good. It's all good to go. Right, now then, I'm on centre. Now I've just got to bring in the bottom wing of the foot. The flute, the flute is over, I'm using this bottom wing of the tool and I'm pointing the bevel the way I want to go, the uh, bevel the way I want to go. Break it all out at the end there. So let me move that in a bit. Always keep the tall rest close as you can. So we just come in on that bottom wing, just rotate it, get here, get the bevel point in, rotate. Otherwise, we get a lot of breakout. Right. We're going to start nearly round. Now, I know it's round, you can hear the difference. So now I'm going to actually get my bezel rubbing. She's going to come in this way. Then the next this square. If I take that in like that, then I won't get any chip out on the end. Right, now, I think as far as I can work out, I'm round down here, but I'm bumping up there still, so I've still got more to come. So again, coming in. Tools closed like that, fleet closed, get there, roll it, follow the bevel. That noise is because it's, it's not round at that point, okay? Now, Right, now I can, I can do the same cut with a bowl gouge. I'm probably a little bit high there. Right, I can do the same, the same cut with a bowl gouge, but you can't take as much because what will happen is, uh, because of the way the wings are, Be careful on how much you, you take. There you go. Coming up. So I've got this. Just want to get it round. There are, we're round now, all the way along. We've got a little bump there, so one of them will come up. So a nice fine cut. Right now, if you want to shear cut it, drop your tool rest down. Drop your tool rest down. 
tool handles right down, come in here. Now you can get a shear cut. And what you should get is this. Okay? And it should be nice, long fibres, no crushing on it. It mustn't crush. Tool rest is low. Tool handle, look, my tool is right down, right down low. So a little stick just there in the case. Right, there we go. Nice and even now. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put a spot. I'm going to get a spot on here so I can hold it. I'm coming in. Like so. Maybe a little bit more foot, I don't know. Right, when I come over I want it to be completely closed, like that. That gives me the dovetail. Right, that'd be enough to hold that on. Right, let's have a look and see what we've got. There you go, that's that finished guys. Okay, that's the finish we've got. And as you can see, that's quite... You know, you can do both, spindle gouge as well, as roughing gouge, it's just how you present it. You just present it a little bit differently. So right, these are just knocked back a little bit and I can turn this round, get this mounted. Whether I'm gonna actually fit that in these drawers, I don't know, let me have a look. Yep. We're in there. Okay, that's brilliant. We're done. Right. Now, which I probably should have left a slightly bigger, done a bigger tenon on the bottom of that, because I'm going to show a little bit of back hollow. Now you wouldn't really back hollow on side grain like this. This is, um, this is more bowl orientation. It's not end grain, but uh, I'll, I'll try a little bit. I'll do just a little bit and see what we do. Right, I'm at centre height. So first off, I'm just going to clean up the bottom. So I've got to come in with my flute right over, right close. To pick up the cut, get in there, rotate. come across again a little bit of vibration it's not quite square on the end so again I'll come in again pick it up rotate it and follow in. there we go right now as I say a back following a little bit One gal, you get a different gal. Now, for back following, I would normally use this one, which has got a longer grind on it. Okay, this probably this is a bit big, this chisel, really. But we've got to be right over, we've got to be closed, obviously. And we've got to come in, we've got to pick up the cut, and then we've got to pull the tool up and up over. Now, let me get back in here. Oh, let me close it. There we go. Right, so back following is. Horrible cut. This is side grain, so it's, it's going to kick a little bit. It's not very good. Hang on, let me get a smaller one. Let me go for a smaller. Probably better on this one. Yeah. Right. There we go. Right, I'm going to use. As you 
See, I don't like it. It's a bit... Right, hang on, let me stop that. I think I might have moved that off on the top. No, it's all right. See, this is side grain. This is better on end grain. It's not really... I probably shouldn't be doing it on this. So I'll just make sure that's uh, chucked up right. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah, on this, you'd be better off with a pull cut. And this is pull cutting. screeching because it's too small at all. So if I go over to oh, sorry, one go, that one. Go to the bigger tool, we don't get too much screeching. But the trouble with back hollowing on here, well this is that's just pull cutting. Back hollowing is in and up and over. But it's a build because it's it's not end grain and it should be done on end grain. But with this, you would really be using uh, a bowl gel. So, we'll come over, we'll pick up our cut, we'll come in, we'll roll it. I'm going to have to get rid of my tail stop first, I can't swing. I can't get a swing, sorry guys. <laughs> right, okay. Back to where I was. Right, so yeah, roll it round, come round. Now you cannot back hollow with a bowl gal. Don't try it, the wings are too steep, it will catch, it'll be horrible. I say, I don't like back hollowing anyway. I find it's an aggressive way, it's just to get wood out, really. On little end grain pots. But now the trouble with this, is because it's so small, when I get down here, Start to lose room. But this ain't a big this ain't a big pot. But if I go down to a quarter inch bowl gouge, I'm gonna get a lot of chatter because it's it's too thin at all. Um, but when you get onto this one, as I start to get a bit deeper, I won't be able to run the bevel down the sides. I'll come off the bevel. I won't be able to run it. See here, I can pick up the cut here. My bevel is facing the way I want to go. I just roll it back, and then as I come down to the front, I roll it back over, and I come round. Okay? But personally, I'd say the better tool for that is to go over the carbide. Okay? This is the little 6 mil cutter. Go over the carbide. But again, don't use it flat, roll it to the side, work off the tip. If you come up here, on this side, like this, that's scraping. That there, that looks like you're getting fibres that you're cutting, okay? You try and cut them. Right? This looks like you're cutting, you're not. They're all crushed up, they're little bits. You're not cutting with it. To be cutting, you must come off the tip. The only way you can cut is to come off with a tip. These cutters can't cut on the side when it's down like that. They'd cut if you had it upright, but if you come in here and you've got it upright, that's going to get so aggressive. And yes, it will cut, but it's going to be too aggressive because that wants to dig in. If you come to the side there, it looks good, but all that is is scraping. Because once that cutter's down like that, it's just you're on the edge of the cutter. You're going to dull it so, especially with a small 6mm cutter like this, you're going to dull that so quick. But if you can get on this tip here, like this, and the tip, you can actually, you'll be cutting with it. It'll be striking. There we go. And we can just come in. 
But so these, when you've got these little, when you've got these little pots, you can't really get around. Not when you're on the bottom and go round. So for that, you got to go over to the box follower. This has the nine mil standard cut. In some situations, you can't help it. You've got to scrape it. Okay. Now you can come round with this and get it. But again, I can do it while I'm up here. And with it rolled over, that will be cut in there. Okay. I've got the tool like this. The cutter is on an angle. Okay. But because of the size of it, I can't ride the bevel. It's just, you, it's just not, you can't do it. It's, it's too narrow. There's no choice. But with this, you can use them just flat. But remember, they do get a bit more aggressive. But what I find is, this will just get you down so quick. And this, I find better Now this is the number two box follower that I do. I do the number one, which is... Right, so this is the two. You can see the difference in them, okay? Well, not this handle, it's more that bit of handle. Right, this is the two. So this is the 10 mil, this is the 12 mil bar. This one, if you do it, I mean, you can do it on this one with this, it's no different. And with little, pots of this size this is probably the better one but if you're going to be overhanging more I mean that that will when I get to the bottom I'm going to be on close to half of the distance of the bar so my personal preference would be this one okay the bigger one and you can come in you won't get the vibration with it because it's a bigger bar and then of course if you go bigger than this then you step up to the 16 mil round bar okay and that's on a round bar <coughs> for the reason being uh, if I can find the tool right there's the tool right now so then you go from this one up to this one now, the reason this is on a round bar, because you can go right up to here with this one, and that'll give you, well, that's a long distance. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a tape measure, I would tell you. It looks quite far. You wouldn't want to walk it without a packed lunch. Right, so you can go up, that's a 12, 13 inch bar, so you can get right up to 11 inches deep quite easily in it. Because being on a round bar, when you come in, where you'll get this, when you get deeper, and it's not on here, but when you get deeper and it's a bit grabby, you can just turn it, you can turn it just that tiny bit, and that little bit just totally stops any grab whatsoever. Okay? You'll still move the wood, but you won't get no catching. That's why I do it on the round bar. Okay? That's why it's on the round bar. But anyway, let's get back to this. Right, because of course, now all I'm doing really here is scraping with this. And sometimes, yes, you just have to scrape. It's the, all there is to it. But you'll find the finish won't be as good. And this little nine mil cutter is fantastic. Bigger than nine mil, you start to get, get too much grabbing. Now I want to watch because, let me see where I am. 
Yeah, I'm getting quite near to the bottom now. Right, so... I'm screeching a bit because it's getting thin at the side. Right, I'm stopping at that. I'm going to do a little cut here. Just like that on the top. And then what I'm going to do... Seems like a big tool. But I'm going to come in with the... SCH3. This has a 12mm cutter. And what this will do is this will give me a lovely clean finish. I will come round as much as you can. Get on the tip of that tool. And that will sheer cut the inside of that. I've got a little ridge there. Because you can't get that good a finish. Right, hang on, I want to catch that. See? This is what you'll get from, from this tool. These fibres, look. I mean, they're so fine, I can't, can't keep them together. Right, let me concentrate, because I've got a little ridge there. That one's gone. I've got one there. Right, OK. So, right round, work off the tip of the tool. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera. Work off the tip of the tool, lovely fine shavings. That's what you want, those shavings, okay? And this is kiln dried wood, this ain't wet wood. Right, a little bit there. Thing is, I get carried away, I could be taking wood away all day. Right, that's it. So that's got a follow on that. Right, now then, obviously I should just go through a little bit of the sand on that. See what this pot turns out like. Right, this will be very quick. How are we doing time? 27. 27. Right, this is going to end in a minute, guys. So this has got to be super quick. A little bit more pace. This is just my own sanding pace. Right, get rid of that. Little bit of rag. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some canoeva wax. And you need the speed to get this to melt. And just rub till it stops moving. We'll do that back following on another one. What we'll do is we'll do, I've got a little dibble in the bottom there. Tiny little dibble. Never mind. Um, on the next one, we'll do a bit of back hollowing, but we'll do it on some end grain. We'll show it properly, so you can actually see how it actually works. It's not, not to be done on side grain. You don't do it on bowls. You never, never back holler bowls. There we go. Right. That's quite a nice finish on that. Right, so I've just got that little foot to take off the bottom. But there we go, I've got a little dibble, but never mind. There's a finish on that. Look at that. Pretty good, no tear out. You got it? Mm -hmm. That's another little pot. Now, just to turn the foot off. Uh, right, what am I going to turn? How am I going to turn that foot off? Let's see. It's a bit. I wasn't really preparing for 
turning the foot off of it. But I think, I suppose I should. I'm going to pop it on a chuck. Now this isn't for anything. This will probably end up in the fire, so. But just to show you, now. I can get it in there. Right, now that's just off of round. So that shouldn't mark that. That shouldn't really mark it. And I'm not holding it tight. I don't need to hold it tight. Because to take that bottom off, I'm going to use my spindle gouge. What I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here. Because then I'm pushing down, so if I go that way, there's a chance I'll pop it out. If I go this way, all the forces are going down. by bringing my chisel up see these like hairs look okay and that gives me a super smooth and what all that is is by coming in and then bringing my chisel up like that so don't just pull back with it come up like so and you'll get that smooth finish now I want to just get rid of that because there's a slight bump to the middle and it's not going to sit flat so yeah just come in and then just bring it up if you bring it up and come off the top you'll get nice shine, nice uh, filings like that you can come across this way but if you do get your flute in flute completely closed get a bevel rub in Turn it, pick up the cut. And come in. And that give me a little foot just here. Little foot there just to sit on. Right, that's it. Sorry guys. I get carried away doing little things like I love my spindle gouge. I think it's more versatile than a bowl gouge, a spindle gouge. You do a lot more with a spindle gouge than you'll ever do with a bowl gouge. People think it's the bowl gouge that is a better tool. No. Spindle gouge can do so much more than the bowl gouge. Right. That's done, guys. And I will see you in a few minutes on the next one. Toodle pip.